Hello. Today we'll be introducing mobile phone data and its applications. The intention of this video is to raise awareness of the opportunities provided by this form of big data to improve the availability, accessibility, and quality of official statistics and sustainable development goal indicators. First, what is mobile phone data? Mobile phone data here is any type of mobile network event data that is stored by a mobile network operator and includes a subscriber identifier, the time of the network event, and the location of the cell tower that serviced the event. Mobile phone data can come in different forms. Call detail records are generated every time a subscriber makes or receives a call, sends or receives an SMS message, or uses mobile data. One advantage of CTRs is that these are routinely stored by MNOs for billing purposes, meaning MNOs do not need to retain additional data. Signaling data refers to all other signals in a mobile network which are not events billable to subscribers. Such data are passively generated by mobile devices connected to a network more frequently than CDR data, resulting in higher quality data sets. However, the quantity of data produced by passive signaling requires a greater investment in data infrastructure. While this is becoming increasingly common amongst MNOs, passive signaling data is not routinely stored for longer than weeks or months. Active signaling data can be generated by MNOs sending signals to mobile devices. However, this requires specific justification for the data to be generated, such as the information being required for law enforcement purposes. Active signaling data is therefore not regularly generated, making it difficult to use for statistical purposes. We will therefore focus on passively generated mobile phone data in this video. Mobile phone data has three essential features for studying mobility, a subscriber identifier, a time attribute, and the location of the cell tower which routed the network event. With these three features, we can link together the locations of a subscriber over time to generate an individual trajectory, a record of an individual's movements. By combining and anonymizing the data of many subscribers, we can produce insights into broad patterns of movement and mobility, which can be useful in a broad range of applications. Mobile phone data may also include other features, depending on the type of data and what has been agreed with the MNO, such as the type of network event or the subscriber ID of the other party to a call or SMS message. However, mobile phone data does not include any information about the contents of a network event, only metadata generated as it passes through the network. Individuals' location data is highly sensitive. It is therefore essential that subscriber privacy is protected when working with mobile phone data. In order to preserve public trust in the use of mobile phone data, five key principles must be adhered to. The use of mobile phone data must be fit for purpose. This means the data must be necessary to achieve the objectives of a project, and the project must warrant the use of individuals' location data. Practitioners must maintain professional standards when using mobile phone data, including scientific principles and professional ethics. Political or financial pressure from any government or private body should not be allowed to influence or interfere with the development, production or dissemination of statistics or indicators in order to maintain the credibility of the work. The privacy of individuals included in the mobile phone data set must be protected. Practitioners using mobile phone data must ensure that appropriate safeguards are in place to protect individual privacy, that best practice is followed, and that all relevant laws and regulations are identified and complied with. Practitioners must also be dedicated to quality assurance by presenting the source, methods and procedures used to produce mobility statistics. This facilitates the correct interpretation of the statistics by transparently presenting the strengths and limitations of the work. Finally, practitioners must collaborate to promote consistency across organizations and the community to facilitate the development and improvement of statistics derived from mobile phone data and promote the understanding of such data products. There are a number of important strengths that make mobile phones an exciting source of big data. Mobile phones are nearly ubiquitous all around the world. The International Telecommunication Union estimates there are 110 mobile cellular subscriptions per 100 people globally and 76 per 100 in the least developed countries, helping to address gaps in traditional data sources. Mobile phone data is also high quality granular data generated in near real time, allowing for the production of timely insights in situations where accurate up-to-date information is paramount. Lastly, mobile phone data is already generated by MNOs, reducing the need to develop and implement new procedures or data infrastructure. However, as with any data, there are a range of limitations which are important to consider when using mobile phone data. 
Unlike location data derived from GPS devices, for example, the spatial precision of mobile phone data is limited by the density of cell towers. While in densely populated urban areas, subscribers will rarely be far from a cell tower, in rural areas, a subscriber could be as far as 8 kilometers from the tower routing a network event. Another important limitation is that subscribers in a dataset are only a subset of the population and may not be representative of the population as a whole. The individuals in a dataset are only those who have a mobile device, subscribe to participating MNO, and use their device enough to be included in the study. Depending on the situation, each of these may be affected by age, gender, socioeconomic status, or a number of other factors. It's therefore essential that the representativeness of the dataset is considered and, where possible, accounted for when drawing insights from mobile phone data. Furthermore, one subscription does not definitively represent one person. Depending on the situation, mobile device sharing may be more or less common. Similarly, one individual may possess multiple mobile devices or multiple subscriptions. As with the likelihood an individual is represented in a mobile phone data set, the likelihood of sharing or possessing multiple subscriptions may be affected by factors such as age, gender, and socioeconomic status. An additional limitation is that while MNOs already generate this data, access will need to be negotiated. MNOs have a responsibility to protect personal and sensitive data about their subscribers, meaning gaining access will require the MNO to be satisfied that there is sufficient justification to access the data and confidence that subscribers' privacy will be protected. The size of the data also requires suitable data infrastructure, including on the part of the MNO if they are required to store additional data. Depending on the type of data and the geographic area and length of time the data covers, this may require significant investment. With these strengths and limitations in mind, we can look at some of the applications of CTR data, including a number of case studies. CTR data has a broad range of applications, such as disaster management, including informing disaster preparedness and monitoring the displacement of people by disaster. Dynamic population mapping for calculating official population statistics and for public health purposes. Migration, such as understanding domestic migration, including seasonal workers and cross-border commuting. Tourism, including inbound, domestic and outbound tourism statistics. Transportation, such as commuting statistics and traffic demand modelling. And for insights into the development of information societies through ICT statistics. Mobile phone data has been used in the city of Tartu in Estonia to study commuting and travel patterns and support the planning and implementation of a new public transport system. Here, mobile phone data was used to produce statistics such as the number of commuters traveling between residential and commercial areas of the city. Mobile phone data was used in the Gambia to assess the impact of government COVID restrictions on mobility, which highlighted the greater impact of restrictions on smaller villages. In this case, Mobile phone data was used to calculate statistics, such as the average distance traveled each day by subscribers living in large cities and small villages. Mobile phone data was also used to study the displacement of people after the 2021 earthquake in Haiti, including identifying areas where substantial numbers of people had been displaced from and to. Mobile phone data here was used to calculate the change in distance traveled by subscribers in affected areas and the change in the number of subscribers living in impacted administrative districts. The longest running official statistics time series for mobile phone data is for tourism in Estonia. Mobile phone data is also now used similarly in Indonesia. In both countries, mobile phone data has been a key source of inbound tourism data for years now, largely replacing border surveys. The methodologies for tourism statistics have become well developed due to many years experience in the two countries and generate timelier and more disaggregated results while reducing the cost and the burden on tourists. Lastly, mobile phone data can be used to calculate Information Society Sustainable Development Goal Indicators. For example, mobile phone data has been used to calculate the percentage of the population in Indonesia and Brazil using the internet. Comparison to traditional data sources shows that mobile phone data produces similar results and can complement or supplement existing household surveys. I hope this video has been instructive. If you would like further information about the full mobile phone data raising awareness course or the work of the mobile phone data task team, please contact us. Thank you.